Welcome back to World News Now, everybody. Let's face it, we're all guilty of it. Texting over dinner, surfing the net when we're supposed to be working. I never do that. But how do you know if you are just using technology as opposed, though, to becoming addicted to it? Our tech contributor, Daniel Seberg, is out with a new book. It is called The Digital Diet, and he's here to help us learn all how to power down. It's finally good to see you face to face. We certainly know your pieces, but it's you good too, to see Rob. you. In I'm, I'm, I would love to talk about this more. I just have to finish sending this email, all right? It's <laughs> so hard to get a signal in here. That's crazy. <laughs> I'll give you a minute. Finish the call. All right, it's fine. And then we'll get back to it. <laughs> the, the book is fascinating. I love the topic. Why? Do, how big a problem do you really think it is? I think it's pretty pervasive. And I think that there's a spectrum that we're talking about here. You know, on the one end of the scale, there are people who are totally addicted to their gadgets. They can't put them down. It's harming their lives. On the other end, there are people who really don't think about this stuff. They're not interested in new technology. And somewhere in the middle are the rest of us grappling with this stuff, trying to find a way to fit it into our lives, and, and overwhelmed in many cases. And, we, and gadgets really have changed the way we live. They've changed the way we communicate. How do you know, though, if you just are really into it and whether you may have a problem and you are truly are addicted? Yeah, I mean, I use the word addiction in the title. And, and sometimes the word addiction gets overused. You know, we say we're addicted to coffee or we're addicted to playing Scrabble. You know, but there are <laughs> true addictions that we're talking about here. And within the medical community, there's a very passionate debate about whether tech addiction is a leg legitimate diagnosis. And they're, they're quite split down the middle on this. I would say for me that I was trending towards being obsessed and certainly close to addiction. And I think that what that means really is it gets in the way of other things. And you, know, you can't find the balance, that, that people around you are concerned, that you can't mm. focus on things, that they only see the top of your head because you're always down <laughs> typing on things. I mean, that's when it starts to become a problem. And talk about your four-step plan for kind of weaning yourself off the tech stuff. Yeah, so the four-step plan, there's actually a 28-day plan within those four steps. But basically, the first part of it is to rethink. So that's just to step back, get some perspective. Then there's, first it's, and then reboot, which is all about a little bit of a detox. I mean, a day or two here where you put the gadgets away and just kind of get some distance from everything. Then it's about reconnect, which is about finding those people in your lives that you maybe haven't been out with on a coffee date, or the family members who you've been texting from your bedroom instead of coming down and having a conversation. Right. And then it's about revitalizing, so incorporating some technology, because I love technology. I right. have my, most of my life that I can remember, I've loved technology. But I want people to feel that way about it, not feel like they want to put it in a blender. And so it's it's about incorporating the right technology. Sometimes I like to call it outsourcing self-control. So sometimes it's apps that will help you not text while driving, you know, things that will work for you and not against you. And that makes a lot of sense. And, and you make a big point out of saying we need to pick human quality time over time with Facebook, time with Twitter, time with the laptop. But that's a big part of it. Remember the people around you and spend face-to-face -face time as opposed to, you know, the texting Exactly. We, we forget that there are real people on the other end of those social networks. And I know, for one, I got too caught up in that, especially I, I began sort of sculpting my Internet identity. I had this alter ego <laughs> that I was almost happier with than the real me, which is... Strange. And let me go through some quick tips here. You talk about putting the gadgets in the fridge yes. during dinner. Yes, that's a great tip for families. If you're all sitting there with these screens and you can't talk to each other, put them in the fridge during dinner, serve them as dessert. And tech turds. Yeah, tech turds. <laughs> I love that phrase. That's a little disgusting, right? <laughs> so this is what I call a tech turd. Taking your phone like this, and throwing it out on the table when we're both out having dinner or right. something like that. It ends up being this distraction. Any flashing light on there, I'm like, Rob, that was really an interesting thing you just said. And all of a sudden, I pick up my device. It's horrible. And a big one, don't sleep with it next to you. Don't sleep with it next to you. Charge your phone anywhere except next to your bed, the kitchen, the bathroom, if you have to. You know, survive that 45 seconds to a minute that you have to go get your device and give yourself a little bit of a, a, a break from all the technology. Great there. advice, and Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Good luck with the book and Thanks. some vitamins for all of us tech addicts out there for sure. <laughs> and again, you can pick up the digital diet on bookshelves right now. You're watching World News Now. We'll be back with more right after this.